Thanks for tuning in. You're listening to the best animated shows ever, so far, with MC and Troy. I'm Troy. And I'm MC. And this. And this is the best animated shows ever. So far. You should have kept going. We would not be in sync at all. (laughs) Finish the intro. Where we watch, discuss, and rank every animated show ever. Eventually. That's right, MC. That's right, that's right. Uh, And we are here today to talk about a show I remember very fondly from when I was growing up. A show called Rocket Power from Nickelodeon. I remember watching it. Look at yeah. Back. Sorry, they can't see us. We have our, our, we're on Zoom, and I have a background with Rocket Power. I love Rocket Power. This show, like, listen, I wasn't really an extreme sports kid, like, but I rollerbladed a lot. And the seeing these kids, like, look, these kids on TV and they're rollerblading, made me really happy. Um, rollerbladed, played a little bit of street hockey. Oh, sure. Because uh, Australia don't really have. That much ice outside of rinks <laughs> inside. Uh and no, um <laughs> Yeah. And um I skateboarded a little bit. Um not real good. Mostly just cruised around. See I I never learned to even stand upright on a skateboard. Did BMX. Oh. A little bit. Uh not not like uh, there was some people who I knew, knew who did it like as a sport. I did mm-hmm. it more for fun. Um, I didn't do races and stuff, but there were. I lived on an army base called Puckapunyal in Victoria, which is about a hundred kilometers outside of Melbourne. Mm-hmm. Um, when I was a kid, and right outside of town, uh, is a BMX track. Okay. And they would have competitions and stuff down there, but me and my friends would just ride down there and just go off the jumps and stuff and do all that sort of fun stuff. I BMX scares me, MC, I'm gonna be totally honest, because like I like riding a bike for like locomotion, but a bike is such a big thing and to do to do the big jumps with the big thing seems scary. I never even really rollerbladed off jumps that much, but uh bikes bike plus jumps it makes me scared. It makes me very uncomfortable. I mean, I used to do it. I don't really, <laughs> don't Dude, really think I could do it nowadays. We uh, don't, what do you mean? Don't think you absolutely cannot. MC. Yesterday we watched some of the uh, the they did a thing on ABC called the uh, not the Australian Broadcasting Company, the American one, the real ABC. <laughs> uh, <laughs> No. Anyway, uh, called the the Great Disney Family Sing Along, where they were like, "We're all stuck at home. Let's do a sing along." And so it was like celebrities doing home video versions of sing along songs of Disney songs. But it was really good, and it was really sweet and pure, and made me really happy. And shut up! I choked up every song that played. But the reason I'm telling you this is I was watching it with my son, and so I was holding him and singing along with the songs and stuff. And I would like bounce you know at the knees like vigorously to the beat and then was like oh my knees hurt from bouncing (laughs) so no i absolutely could not do a bmx jump right now and neither could you you don't have a child wearing you down but you still have life wearing you down (laughs) oh yeah my my lower back's been killing me the last (laughs) couple of days uh you found out um yesterday uh what was going on uh oh yeah yeah, oh, yeah. I had a you have hardship to share. Yeah, I had a whole ordeal with my toilet, um, and I had to go and replace a whole bunch of bits on it and uh, reseal it back up. And I I actually didn't finish it until today, like midway through today. So it, it took it me almost yeah. Uh, nice. it, I'm giving it like twelve hours to let it set. <laughs> To let like all the sealant set and um hopefully it will be good but um i'm not gonna test it until the morning we'll, we'll see how it all goes right. so tomorrow morning everybody mc's gonna do a big poop and we'll see if the toilet holds up until oh yeah after then. my after my coffee <laughs> and probably the podcast 
<laughs> oh, that's right. We have another podcast later. This is another 3 a.m. episode for anyone keeping score. Um, MC, ro- Rocket Power. I have Rugrats yeah. up on my screen. That's not the one we're talking about. But the reason I have Rugrats up on my screen is because the same duo who is responsible for Rugrats and All Real Monsters, their names are Arling Plasky and Gabor, G- Gabor Kasupo. Mm-hmm. He's a Hungarian-American animator, writer, director, and producer, and graphic designer. Gabor Kasupo, I think. Uh, anyway, the two of them were responsible for, for Rugrats, for All Real Monsters, and for Rocket Power, and they worked on a bunch of other Nickelodeon shows as well. So there's some like good pedigree associated with Rocket Power. I right? mean, yeah, and like the style, like the drawing style mm-hmm. is very like that Nickelodeon, that era Nickelodeon style. So it, it, I can see like the, that they have a style that they run with, yeah. like it, the drawing style. It's because it's our weird, real like, monsters. It's... It's almost it's, shaky, like the lines almost are shaky, but they're not quite, but they're not like clean lines. I don't know. I like it. Yeah, I like the and, style. and and, and they, uh, the outlines are kind of thick mm-hmm. in all of the shows. Like that, there's a definition about every, uh, like all the characters, like it's very distinct. Yeah. Um. The one other thing I want to talk about here before we get into... Uh, today's episode is uh, well okay so one thing I have to just give a call out here there's a YouTube channel I found called Channel Frederator and they have they do they do videos where they do 107 facts about blank and so I watched their 107 facts about Rocket Power it was actually very interesting so I'm not going to give you a whole lot of background information today but if you want to know a ton about about Rocket Power go check out Channel Frederator on YouTube um so the other thing that I want to talk about is the safety gear and i think we might have mentioned this last episode when we talked about our memories of rocket power is that i remember that the kids were always wearing helmets and apparently that was like when the show was being developed they were like this absolutely has to be the case like we're gonna show these kids doing extreme sports and stuff but they're gonna wear helmets and sometimes they're gonna get hurt and they're gonna have to deal with it like these kids aren't superheroes they're not invulnerable so they wear their pads and sometimes they fall and I love that that's a part of the show from the very beginning because it, it made it more real to me as a kid because, like, I would never be allowed to go out rollerblading without wearing some sort of gear when I was nine years old like these kids are. So it's great that they wear that um, stuff, too. Helmet, knee pads, wrist mm-hmm. guards. They don't wear wrist guards in most cases, I don't believe. No. But they've got but the knee pads and elbow pads. I that was whenever I went rollerblading. That's what mm-hmm. I wore until I was about ten, and then I got rid of the wrist pads because my parents were like, "You're doing all right. You haven't yeah. fallen over and killed yourself yet. You can get rid of the <laughs> wrist pads." So yeah. then, about two weeks later, I had the biggest crash of my life on my uh, blades, and my hands were fine. I had this big like uh, road rash up along the outside of my thigh. Mm-hmm. That was bad. <laughs> I, I but I had knee pads, think... so my knee pads, when uh, I was my a... knees were good. <laughs> when I was when I was a kid and falling down, I genuinely think it was the wrist guards that protected me more often than anything else. Because, oh yeah. Like, when you're learning to skate, like you're gonna fall and you're gonna put your hands out, and that'll just they'll get ripped up unless you have some padding there. So, so yeah, the uh, the rock power kids are missing their wrist guards, but other than that, they're doing a pretty good job from a safety perspective. I, I never wore hard. elbow pads. Um, I did, but I don't feel like they ever helped too much. Knees, knees and no. wrists are what hit the ground. Not yeah. Close. Um, let's talk about episode one, MC, after these messages. Hello, you beautiful YouTube watchers. If you enjoyed this, don't forget to like and subscribe. And we're not back. We're not. Uh, and we're back. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> episode one is, of course, two stories because this is like a uh, SpongeBob SquarePants um, a show that's got two two ten minute stories per episode, basically. So we're going to be talking about New Squid on the Block and Down the Drain. And New Squid on the Block is really, I mean, that's that's your introduction episode right there because it's about 
one of the four kids that the show is about showing up in town for the first time. It's about Sammy getting here. Yeah, and um, pretty much the whole episode's about Sam showing up and being mm-hmm. introduced to the gang and mm-hmm. uh, everything about him. So Sam's nine years old like Twister and um, Otto okay. Rocket. Yeah, uh, I... <laughs> It, it slipped my mind, we, uh, <laughs> but um, yeah, Otto and uh, Twister uh, are nine years old, uh, mm-hmm. and Reggie is mm-hmm. uh, Regina, I believe her real name don't, is. Don't call her Regina. No, she doesn't like that, uh, but um, she's a year older. Correct. And while... Uh, Otto and Twister are in the fifth grade. Uh, no, wait, the fourth grade. I can't remember. I don't remember what grades they are, my dude. Yeah, and <laughs> um, but Sam and uh Reggie are in the same grade, even though Sam's yeah. the same age as the younger boys. And he skipped year because Sam's like a little nerdy boy. Yeah, and essentially, Otto keeps calling Twister Squid. Mm-hmm. With no explanation. Because- no, uh, I believe they he mentions it like, "Oh, you're the new guy, so you're the squid." That that that's the whole explanation. Uh, but uh, the Reggie is filming Twister and Otto on a half pipe at the beginning for mm-hmm. her zine, and they beef it pretty well, bad. Hang on. hang on, she can't be filming them for her zine. That doesn't make any sense. No, the zine I... is printed on paper you mc mc i mean you can't print videos on paper i mean you can definitely take stills from a video Mm, that could be and put it yeah this is one thing that that surprised me because i I believe that throughout the show it's it's twister is the one who films everything that even comes up in our episode so i it's weird to me that reggie's filming them in here but well i mean twister skating He is, and he's bad, and so is Otto. This show, like, right off the bat is like, hey, what about some light misogyny in your, like, 10-year-olds? And, because they're like, well, let's see you do it. And Rich is like, all right, and does, like, a sick stunt. And then she's like, see, I can do it. And they're like, you have a girls. And I'm like, hmm. And then she punches yeah. them both in the nose. She doesn't <laughs> actually, but she should. No. And, um... um then Sam, Sam turns up. In. Yeah, yeah. They see Sam getting moved in. He gets a tour from Mrs. Stempleton, who's like this, like Minnesota. Oh, don't you know, kind of woman who takes yeah. him around the neighborhood. She is one of the best characters in this whole show. Mm-hmm. She's this sweet old neighbor lady, and um, her husband's the grumpy neighbor, the like stereotype. He is Mr. Mm-hmm. Wilson, essentially from um, uh. uh Dennis the Menace. Oh, I was thinking, wasn't that the name of the guy from Home Improvement? Wasn't that? I mean, Wilson, the guy on the other I side. I think of the so. Fence? Yeah, yeah. But that guy wasn't grumpy. I was very no. confused when he said that because I immediately thought of the guy on the other side of the fence from Home Improvement, and I was like, yeah, he wasn't grumpy at all. MC, is there MC? Is there a cartoon spinoff of Home Improvement? Probably. There was a guy named Troy Donald. He was a man so I would find him. Just do that shit, yeah, do that shit, yeah, do that shit all day long. Do that thing, and do that thing. Good old girl, it's my thing. I'm pretty easy, I'm pretty wise. Um, no, there's not. No. Aw, uh, damn. Oh, well, uh, but... Mr. We... Stimpleton takes, or Mrs. Stimpleton takes her to the garage and is like, this is Mr. Stimpleton. He's making a model of our house. It's a mailbox with all kinds of motors and gears and stuff. And Sam's like, oh, you should use a different kind of actuator because it'll really give you a better action at your garage door opener. And Mr. Stimpleton's like, oh my god, that's a great idea because they're both nerds. And, uh, but he's a grumpy old man who's like, don't touch that and mm-hmm. stay away my, from my things. And uh, in the second part of this episode, we get even more of him being grumpy old neighbor dude. Mm-hmm. But we'll get to that when we get to it. Um, uh, so after she introduces uh, her husband, she takes 
uh, Sam over to the uh, the group uh, with the rocket's house. Yeah, the and, and introduces um, Sam to the the crew, uh, the rocket crew, uh, Otto, Twister, and Reggie, and mm-hmm. uh, Sam and Reggie sort of headed off, and not so much because the other guys. She's talking about her zine. He's got a computer, and he's like, "You're publishing a zine on that piece of garbage, a piece of hot garbage. Your computer is terrible. It's trash. It belongs in a dumpster pile." <laughs> and she's like, "Oh, all right." And, and he's like, "Let me go get my computer. It's so much <laughs> better, and we can get this zine out mm-hmm. this week." Uh, I think this is where they also talk about, like, where are you from, you weirdo? And he's, like, from Kansas. And they're like, why do you have an N on your shirt? And he's like, because originally I was going to be from New York, but then they changed it to Kansas, but they didn't change my character design. And they're like, oh, okay. Do you guys have, like, do you, do you skateboard in Kansas? And he's like, no. And he's like, do you surf? And he's like, it's freaking Kansas. It's landlocked, you morons. And they're like, oh, what about street hockey? And he's like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. We play street hockey. Well, I mean... Uh, that wouldn't make sense if it was from New York. That whole, that the whole spiel. Bit. Yeah. Well, uh, well I don't not think only a lot of surfing in New York City. There isn't, but there is a lot of skateboarding. Okay. Well, we find out that when Sam says that they played roller hockey in Kansas, he meant other people played yeah. roller hockey, not him. But um. Essentially, uh, he's really bad, and Twister <laughs> knocks him down, and Sam's like, yeah, I'm awful, I'm getting out of here, and runs away when they're playing. Um, The whole thing about the hockey game that's going on is Twister's got a big brother who's an absolute asshole. I hate Twister's big brother so much. He's just a bully and a jerk. Um, and he like has challenged the kids to a hockey game, but they don't have a fourth. Uh, that there's actually two assholes in Twister's older brother's group. Uh, him and the other guy who speaks are both kind of assholes. Mm-hmm. The tall one who mumbles all the time isn't really an asshole, but he doesn't seem to have a backbone, so he just sort of goes along with or everything. Words, yeah, vocabulary. no. Yeah, yeah, he he literally goes, man, me, 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 me. Yeah. Uh, and see, let's just record the rest of the podcast doing impressions of that guy. <laughs> no, thank you. Uh, we we would lose uh viewers for sure. <laughs> <laughs> we would lose what few listeners we have or viewers. Yeah. They should be viewers. Yeah. We'll still anyway. Uh, so the sounds like listen, I can't play hockey with you. I'm terrible. But here's the zine, and somebody like, I, either Otto or Twister, just like rails a hockey puck straight it's at twister <laughs> i think it bounces around but it felt intentional and he just like is like whap, and like knocks it away he's like like that time obama killed a fly that's how like expertly he deflects this hockey puck and they're like whoa that was super cool so they started like throwing a bunch of stuff at him and he's just like <coughs> snap 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 <coughs> yeah now i choked myself <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, uh, Sammy seems to be an impenetrable wall uh, when it comes to things flying at him. He can just seem to block everything that comes his way. Mm-hmm. And Otto's like, get him a mask! And then we get a scene of him standing in between two garbage cans and just like a million pucks coming at him and he just like so good. bats them all away. He's so good. Uh, so the t- the game's going on, and and Lars, that's Twister's older brother, is like, I can't believe they're beating us. This is ridiculous. What's going on? But then the hockey puck, oh no, what's that? MC? It's gone into the mailbox, the fancy robot mailbox. And Lars is like, well, the international rules of street hockey say if you lose the puck, then you lose the game. Which I MC, MC, I think he's making that up. No, I'm pretty sure that's true. If you lose the I... puck, you lose the game. I think he's making it up. Um. <laughs> Fortunately, Sam's here, and Sam, like, invents a remote control and hacks into the mainframe of the mailbox and opens it up, and it spits out the puck. And he catches it and, and then... slides back about 12 feet and then falls on his ass. <laughs> yes, he does. But hey, listen, he saved the day, he saved the game, 
and now he can be part of the crew, which means that now he's the squid. Yeah, and Twister's all like, wait, he's the squid now? Yay, I'm, I'm not, not the, the squid, squid anymore. anymore. Squid. <laughs> uh, but up until that point, nice. Twister Twister was like, uh, I'm not really keen on this new kid. Can we not, right. like, hang with him? <laughs> what if we just didn't hang out with the new kid? What if I kept being the new kid? And they're like, okay, but that means you're the new kid. And he's like, I don't want to be the new kid. So then, MC, that ends that episode. And we go into yep. the second story. Down the Drain, which I remembered this episode so vividly when I started watching it. Like, this is a story about yeah. kids having a pool party in Mr. Snippleton's pool while he's out of town. And, like, as soon as it started, I was, I was just, I remember everything. I remember yeah. everything. So, uh, I'm going to start this off. He is like, okay, this is how you ca- take care of the pool. And mm-hmm. he has a long spiel about everything and his wife is just like can we just go on our holiday already can you stop harassing reggie she's a good girl she will take care of everything don't worry about it Mm -hmm. and mr stimpleton's like okay let's go on our vacation and then okay you say vacation they're going to lake tahoe or something so that he can go to an anger management class yeah, that's and that's not th- a great vacation. No, uh, but then they leave. Mm-hmm. There's this big. You, you didn't even explain the big computer machine. There's a big oh, orange like rocket yeah. ship space or shaped uh console that controls like the stereo and all the lights in the house and the pool and everything. Mister Snippleton invented the smart home, is what I'm saying. Uh, wait. What's that? It's not smart. Smart House? Is that what it's called? MC, have we talked about Smart House before? Do you remember the smart Disney House? movie? Yeah, the Disney Channel yeah. original movie Smart House, which was the introduction to the band Five and also the band Bewitched were both in Smart House. Do you remember Bewitched? No. Yeah, they I have do. A song, they're, they're, they, they have a song where they do an Irish jig in the middle of their pop song, but also part of it says, I huff, I puff, I huff, 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 blow you away. And I thought they were saying, I hump. I thought they were saying, I hump, I hump, hump, hump you, I blow you away. <laughs> and I was like, dang. Dang, <laughs> Bewitch, you're racy. But that was not what they were saying. But, uh, yeah, essentially, um, Miss, Mr. Stimpleton gets, like, shoved out the gate by his wife after the crew is all rocked up and they're all anticipating on getting in this pool. They want in that I, pool. I, I, I believe he's cool with them having using the pool, right? It yeah. seems like he's okay with the idea that, that the rocket power crew is going to use the pool. That He's cool with that. He just wants them to take care of the pool properly. Okay. And the machinery. Right. And what happens is... They, we, so I remember this thing from the show. Uh, it, it's the um pop up cards or whatever that that say like words and stuff, and it's all like funky colors and like oh, swirly. Yeah. For the the episode intro. Yeah. No. Well, not just that, but it's like in the middle of an episode, it will just say like words right. and stuff, and um, uh uh. I just remember it so clearly, like, oh, yeah, it's that. It, and it's, like, so 90s. And this but, one, it's see ya when, when he leaves, and it pops yeah. up crazy, like, graffiti-style text, but flashing colors and stuff. And then when Otto and Twister jump in the pool with their boards, doesn't it say mm-hmm. something else? Does it do Cannonball for that, I would imagine? Uh, maybe. I can't um, remember. So the kids are like having a grand old time hanging out in the pool. Uh, Otto definitely wears his shoes in the pool, which like, what the hell's wrong with you, you monster? Um, I mean, uh, that that's n- not as bad as Sammy, who gets him fully clothed, shoes, everything. <laughs> Still, uh, he just gets in the pool fully clothed, and they're all staring at him like, "What the hell are you doing, man?" Listen. He should just turn to Otto and be like, you're wearing shoes. Like, <laughs> but, we're all uh, morons, apparently. 
but then Otto and Twister get real close to Sammy and they're like, ew, it's a bit warmer over here. Did you pee in the pool? Did you? And then they make fun of him and splash him and, and he's like, you guys suck. Um, so, yeah, the, like, it's weird to have a show where two of your characters, two of your hero characters are bullies to one of the other hero characters. I mean, they don't do it all the time, but it, it it's definitely like that male teasing thing that happens when you're younger. Yeah. yeah. It's just there a and then, mean. yeah, and then Otto is like, "Hey, how about we skate this pool?" And Sam's like, "Yeah, yeah I can cause... totally hack this machine and drain the pool." They're like, <laughs> "They're like, wait a minute, an empty pool would be something that Tony Hawk would skateboard around in in the MC's background. What if we emptied the pool and skateboarded in the pool, and it'd be an empty skateboarding pool?" But here's the thing, MC. I don't think. Listen, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not a Tony Hawk. I'm not a, a Bam Margera. I'm not a... I'm trying to remember other games I remember from Tony... Or names that I remember from Tony Hawk's Pro Skater. Uh, and Annie McDonald. I'm not a... Uh, why didn't I just stop at Annie McDonald? I had a third. And now I've like locked myself into trying to remember a fourth. Um, B? No. Uh, CJ? No. Um, there's one that is initials. <laughs> I'm not helping you at all. Help me, please. No. <laughs> I'm not a Dave Mira. I'll switch to that. I'm not an extreme sportsman, but it seems to me that a regular ass pool would not actually be a good skateboarding pool. Don't you need like a specially made pit for that? No. But it's got that... a lip on it. Wouldn't the yeah. lip, your wheels would hit the lip and then you would crash and die. Uh, no. Uh, this is actually how skate park pools started out they were actually backyard pools in california right. that's how they started you, but surely the technology has developed i mean yes and the lips are now like metal and they they're used for grinding and stuff they're not mm. the ceramic but you want a lip on a skateboarding pool so you can grind it but but if the lip i don't know um no, no, you, it, it, it's a thing. Um, it, like, back in the 70s, it was, like, the thing to do was go into the backyard pools because there was this big drought in California and they would empty right. the pools and skate them. And that's where the song Cat Scratch Fever also came from. I did not know that. Uh, did you know, MC, that skateboards were invented... Uh by a gentleman by the name of Martin uh, in the 50s when he needed to chase after a car and he stole a small girl's scooter, uh, like a box scooter, and it was taking too long for him to catch up to the car, so he ripped the handlebars off of the scooter and Martin then uh, just had the board with the wheels on it and he used that to catch up to the car that he was trying to chase. Do you realize... It took me way too long to realize you were talking about Back to the Future. <laughs> because you said Martin and not Marty. Uh, I, I was uh, just like, what are, what's going on? Oh, oh. Uh. But, um, no, no. It, so what it, happens it, when they empty the pool? Um, essentially, Twister is given the job to take the pipe, which is going to empty the pool to mm -hmm. a drain so they can empty the pool he's kind of just dumps it next to the drain doesn't really pay attention to what's near the drain and he's supposed to put it into the drain yeah and he just leaves it on the ground next to the drain um but um as we all know what happens to hoses and flexible pipe when you start pumping water through it very fast it goes, <laughs> yeah, and, and es place. essentially it does that into the rocket's basement. Yeah, it flops around for a while and then pops through an open window and just starts pumping all the pool water into their basement. That's fine. It's fine. Yeah. Uh, um, and then they skate for a bit, and mm -hmm. Otto grinds the lip of the pool, and there's some cool scene, and then Otto goes flying over the hedge that separates the rockets from the Stimpletons. 
mm-hmm. and he crash lands in their garbage, and that's when they discover the hose in the basement. Mm-hmm. Meanwhile, down at Ocean Shores Park Pier, uh, their dad, Raimundo Rocket, is chilling back in his restaurant, and it's not too busy, and he's like, hey, Tito, listen, it's kind of quiet today. Can you take over? And Tito's like, I've been training for this my whole life. And he, Raimundo's been like kicking back with his feet up, and he gets up, and Tito's like, all right, and goes and sits in the same chair and kicks back with his feet up, which is cute. <laughs> and Raimundo's like, hey, kids, I came home because you know the old saying, when Stimpleton's away, I'm going to use his pool. And then he's like, give him my swim trunks from the basement, and they're all soggy. And he's like, that's fine. No, it's not, Raimundo. Don't put on soggy swim trunks. That's like the worst feeling in the world. But he's like, anyway, I'm going to go over next door and I'm going to jump in the pool. Don't get me in trouble because I used to jump in pools all the time when I was a kid and we got banned from the hotel. And then the kids are like, yeah, don't do it though, dad. And he's like, no, it's fine. I can use his pool. And so then they go, you see, and they uh, what? all the water back. All the yeah. water goes back. Or they, they, they're messing with the computer uh, smart housing. And mm-hmm. everything goes haywire while they're trying to put the water back in as well. The sprinklers yeah, like go the off. The lights are flashing. The music's playing. A big Dr. Octopus hand comes out of the wall and starts picking up trash all over the place. The house gains sentience and it falls in love with their dad. Um, and then that doesn't um, happen. Bewitched uh, plays on a TV screen and says, I hump, I hump, I hump, 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 hump you away. Say you will, say you do, I don't. Say you're true, say to me. But um yeah, and then uh Ray Raymundo um talks about crashing a pool somewhere in I already as did a that teenager. Part. I already you did, did that part in the scene. I already did that part. What happens when he gets the pool? He jumps in the pool. I I mean he does, but uh, I just remember um, Reggie stalling for time, and then when he jumps in the pool, he's like it's a bit cold, and then he jumps in and he's floating there, and then all of his stuff from the basement is floating in the pool, and then (laughs) Stimpleton comes. Stimpleton have my coconut bra. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) and and Stimpleton comes back because he was going to tell Reggie uh, something about the. Smart house, I can't remember what. I'm pretty sure it has to yeah, do with remember. why it went haywire when they tried to pump the water back in. Oh, maybe. Or he was to say, don't let the smart house fall in love with you. It will take over your life and go into lockdown mode and you won't be able to leave the house. And um, essentially, he sees uh, Raymundo in the pool with all of his stuff floating around him. <laughs> and he's like, Rocket! What do you think he thinks happened? Does he think that Raimundo is like, listen, not only am I going to go swim in my neighbor's pool, but I'm just going to bring all of my things with me. Yeah, I don't know. That doesn't make any sense. But as he's standing there yelling at him, the kids all run away. They scamper. They're like, oh, we're getting out of here. Jump on our skateboards and go away. Yep. And that's the end of the episode. Which leads us into best and worst, worst first. And I say it leads us in because I'm going to go first. My worst thing is uh, that the Rocket Power kids do not learn a lesson in that second episode whatsoever. They are horribly irresponsible. They make a horrible mess. They destroy most of their dad's possessions. And they run away at the end. And there's no consequences. And that's, listen, for a show that tries to make sure that to emphasize safety, that is very irresponsible storytelling. I gotta say that I dislike the... uh like the teasing essentially of sam Mm -hmm. um and the perpetuation that um boys teasing each other is uh maybe not a good thing but like definitely something that um is allowed to happen in groups like this and i don't i think they should have like had reggie be like hey quit it a little bit more often or uh maybe even have Otto be like okay with twist twister you're go- going a bit far how how about you quit it yeah, yeah. That, that's not cool like I, 
I'm hopeful that that happens later on at some point. That yeah. There's an episode about the kids realizing that they shouldn't be such jerks to each other because that's not yeah. cool. Uh, how about your best thing? Oh, uh, that there's so many good bits in uh the show. Um, mm. I gotta say I really like uh when Sammy realizes he's really good at uh, being a goalie, and he's like, he he has like a a little I can't be stopped moment. Like you, you <laughs> can't get past me. He, uh, it it just like this awkward nerdy kid just like finding his place in this group and like getting yeah. new friends like i really like that that's good that's yeah sammy even if they he they make fun of him he fits in and it's cute um my best thing from this one was mrs stimpleton because she's just she's so dosh dosh garn she's so gosh darn pure she's just like oh hello little neighbor kid let me take you around and introduce you to everybody you want some pie probably and her husband sucks but she's great and she just makes me happy every time she's on screen i'm not from the midwest but like a a, like sweet midwestern lady like makes me happy every time yeah that is really good the the Um, only way that um she could have been a little bit better is if she uh had a more like um UP accent like Fargo. Yeah, even like exaggerated. Yeah, even even more. Yeah. Uh, have you watched the the Fargo show? Yeah, uh, first good? season. Uh, I'm it's see, a bit keep bloody. In mind that I absolutely don't need another show to watch, and then answer the question: Is it worth watching? No, no, I don't think you would enjoy it as much as I did. Uh, let's okay. put it that way. And um, I mean, Martin Freeman's in it, so I mean that's a pretty good selling point. Yeah. Let me ask you this is there an animated spinoff version of Fargo? I don't believe there is. How about Back to the Future? Uh, there is an animated spinoff of that. That's true. That's a thing. Back yeah. to the Future cartoon. Yep. Back to the Future, the animated series, is a French-American animated science fiction comedy Marty. adventure television series for television based on the live-action Back to the Future. Marty, we're animated. Marty. Uh, ran uh, from 1991 to 1992, was rerun until 1993, and then they were like, no, <laughs> no, we're done. <laughs> we'll rerun you for one year. Um, however, MC, did you know that Back to the Future also known as Back to the Future, the animated series, marked the debut television appearance of one Bill Nye, the science guy, on broadcast I did television. not. Uh, I suppose it's... it's Okay. It marks the debut television appearance of Bill Nye on a nationally broadcast show because Bill Nye, the science guy, was PBS, so it wasn't nationally broadcast. No, Bill Nye, the science guy, was 1993. So yeah, Bill Nye appeared... On Back to the Future, the animated series, before Bill Nye the Science Guy became a show. So that's pretty cool. Anyway, we'll be back next time to talk about episode two of Rocket Power, which is called Secret Spot and Ice Queen. So until then, MC, what should they do? Stay tuned? Is that right? No, it's don't change the channel. Oh, don't change the channel. Stay tuned too. But... Yeah. Thanks for listening to the best animated shows ever so far. Find the show on Twitter at BaseSFCast or email us at BaseSFCast at gmail.com. That's B A S E S F C A S T. Our intro music is Funnin' and Sunnin', and our outro music is Motivator, both by Kevin McLeod at incompetech.com, and licensed under Creative Commons by Attribution 3.0 License. Thanks again for listening, and tune in next time.
This has been a presentation of the We Can Make This Work Probably Network. Follow us on Twitter at Probably Work for more of our questionable content. Also, we have a website called ProbablyWork.com.